In this video, we will continue practicing graphing sine or cosine using period, midline, amplitude, and phase shift. Now, I'm adding in a couple words down here. Um, they have this A, B, H, and K business happening, but I need to know the amplitude, the phase shift, and those aren't always the same thing. So, yeah, the A value is 2. And in this case, that means that the amplitude is 2. But the A value can be negative. Amplitude is always positive. Now, the B value is 1 half. All right, but by itself, that doesn't tell me much of anything. I use the B value um, to help me find the period and the phase shift. So um, the period, let's do that first. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by b. All right, so because b is 1 half, then the period is going to be 2 pi divided by 1 half. Well, dividing by half is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So this would be the same thing as 2 pi times 2, which is why the period is 4 pi. I had written 4p, I meant 4pi. So um, if the period is 4pi, then I'm going to go ahead and put my 4pi right here. That means halfway will be 2pi, and half of that will be 1pi, or just pi, and then this will be 3pi. Okay, so there is no k value, so that means the, mid, the midline is going to stay the x-axis. So this h value um, is going to be the phase shift once I find it. The h value is not pi over 4 in this case. When there's a b value, you have to factor that out in order to figure out what the h value is. But we'll come back to that. For right now, we have enough information to graph our five-point skeleton version, all right? Everything except for the phase shift. So keep in mind that the amplitude is two. And this is the cosine function, all right? So the cosine function we know starts off high, all right? Amplitude two. So this is gonna be my midline. So for my skeleton, I'm gonna start off above and then I'm gonna to go to the midline, and then I'm gonna go below, then back to the midline, and then above again. So I'm not gonna connect these points because uh, there is a phase shift. I'm gonna to have to slide to the left or right. Let's figure out what the phase shift is. Um, what you're gonna to have to do, focus on this part right here. Okay, this is where the phase shift comes from. In fact, let me recopy. So what I have here is 1 half x minus pi over 4. Somehow I need to take the 1 half out of parentheses. So of course that's going to leave x. Now <clears throat> to figure out what comes here, I need to divide. <clears throat> um, to anytime you want to know what goes on the inside when you factor something out, you can always divide by the um, factor that you pulled out. So I could divide both of these by one half. So, uh, and this is pi, not just one fourth. This is pi over four. Okay, so these will cancel each other out. Um, so it's a matter of what's pi over four divided by one half. Well, if you divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So pi over 4 divided by 1 half is the same thing as pi over 4 times 2. Okay, but that's the same thing as 2 pi over 4, which if you reduce this, the 2 goes into the 4 twice, so this is going to be pi over 2. So that is our h value, all right, pi over 2. And uh, that is our phase shift. So it will be pi over 2 to the right. 
So um, if I do that, I'll have my final answer. So looking back at my skeleton points, which are mandatory, I want to see these five points graphed. Um, now I have to ask myself, how big is pi over 2 on this particular problem? Well, pi, here's pi. So pi over 2 would be right here. It's half of pi. So this kind of shows you how far I need to move all the points over. So I'll start with this point. If I move that point over, it's going to end up here. If I do the same thing with all the other points, here's where they will end up. So I can connect these and this will be my final answer. Okay, and that's one period of this cosine function. All right, the range is really going to pertain to the amplitude. Um, from bottom to top, it hits a low of negative 2 and high of positive 2. So the range will be negative 2 to positive 2, including negative 2 and positive 2. So I'll use brackets. All right, let's do one more example. Mm, getting ready. So number 4, the A value is negative 3. So please understand that that means that the amplitude is 3. The amplitude is always positive. The B value is this 4 which doesn't mean a lot to me by itself, but we'll come back to that later. Um, the h value is not pi, so do not write down pi. I'm going to come back to that later also. The k value is negative 2. That tells me that we have a new midline. It will not be the y-axis. The midline will be y equals negative 2. Um, let's talk about the period now. Um, we can calculate the period using the following little formula. It's 2 pi divided by b. So in this case, the period is going to be 2 pi divided by 4. 2 goes into 4 twice. So that means the period is going to equal pi over 2. All right, we basically have to reduce. Once you know your period, you can label your x-axis. So the period is pi over 2. That means um, we're going to have to make this pi over 2. If I go halfway, that's pi over 4. If I go halfway before that, that's pi over 8. If I go three of those, it'll get me to here. So this will be three pi over eight. So there's our x-axis. Okay, um, now we have a new midline because of this negative two. Uh, we have a new midline at negative two. So let's go ahead and just draw that. Okay. All right, so there's my new midline at negative 2. Now, using that midline and the amplitude, um, I should be able to start drawing my skeleton points. All right, everything but the phase shift. Um, this is the sine function. So normally the sine function um, starts at the midline, goes up, down, below, and back to the midline. That's what the sine function usually does. But this one's going to be different because this negative sign means reflection over the x-axis. So instead of going up and down and back, it's going to start off going down. So this is what the sine function will look like when it's upside down. It will go down and back to the middle and then up and back to the middle. So this is the pattern to look for. All right, this is the pattern I will be creating. All right, now don't forget the amplitude is 3. So like I said, I'm going to start at the midline <clears throat> and go down this time. But I'm going to go down 3 because that's what the amplitude says to do. Um, and then I'll go back to the midline. 
And then next I will go three above the midline. And then one more time back to the midline. So this does not include my phase shift yet, um, but it includes everything else. I will not connect the dots. I call this the skeleton. Um, now, it's time to figure out what the phase shift is. For the phase shift, you focus your eyes on this part of the equation, uh, 4x plus pi. So I'm going to do that down here. Okay, so we have this 4x plus pi. To find the phase shift, you have to pull that 4 out of parentheses. And of course, that'll leave x. Now, to know what's going to go right here, you need to divide by the thing you just pulled out. Okay, I'm going to divide both of these by 4. So that's why my phase shift is going to be pi over 4. Because this is positive, it's going to be, um, well, let me just write this down. So we found out the phase shift. And it is pi over 4. Um, but because it's plus, we're going to go left. OK, so it's pi over 4 to the left. So I guess we could say negative pi over 4 as well. Okay, so pi over 4, left pi over 4. In this particular graph, how big is pi over 4? How many squares is that? Um, can you see that pi over 4 is right here? So that's 4 squares. So I need to move every single one of these points 4 squares to the left. So if I do that, um, this point is going to move 4 squares to the left and end up right there. Okay, now all of these points are going to do the same thing. So I could really just follow the pattern now. All right, I, this time because it was a reflection, uh, I went down, middle, up, middle. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to go down, middle, up, middle. Okay, and this is my actual final answer. So I can go ahead and graph this thing. Okay, so your function should look very much like this. Okay, um, so that h value is negative pi over 4. Okay, that's your phase shift is your h value. So don't state your h value until you pull out any b and divide by it. Anyway, the range from bottom to top, um, the lowest point here is negative, let's see, 5. This is negative 5 down here. Negative 5 to 1. So the range is from negative 5 to 1. All right, that's going to do it for me, guys. Take one more glance at this uh, lovely graph. And here endeth the lesson.